Here are four amazing tools you might have missed in Affinity Photo. Hello my friends, how are you doing? My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, let's get started. So the first tool is actually part of our crop tool in Affinity Photo. When you click on that, you have a smart bar up here and one of these points says straighten. When you click on this, you get a horizon straightening tool. The way to use this is find a horizon line in your image and then click on the starting point, hold your left mouse key and go to the other side to draw a straight line over the horizon. When you let go, it is automatically rotated so that your horizon is straight. After that, you simply have to drag in the sides because you can see now we have a background that is transparent so that you crop away the elements that are not covered by your canvas. And after you do this, you can see we have a completely straight horizon. Also, don't forget about my weekly challenge and the live stream on Sunday. Here is the next trick. You have a drawing and you want to remove the white background. And there's actually a tool for that in Affinity Photo. You go to Filters, Colors, and here it says Erase White Paper. When you click on that, automatically the background is removed for you. And if you don't see this checkerboard, go to Document and make a hook next to Transparent Background. Also keep in mind that PNGs have a transparent background, not JPEGs. Here is the next amazing tool. You can actually see the EXIF data. You can also write copyright data, give a rating and more information inside of Affinity Photo. The way you do this is to go to View, Studio, Metadata and this will open up a separate window or it will appear in one of these tabs over here on the side. And here you can see we have a pop down menu with different categories inside. The file category is where you can set the title, the author, author title, description. You can also set keywords and you can even give a rating. Now this is saved into the file when you save it as an affinity photo file or when you export it. You also have here your EXIF data like this, but you can see a more comprehensive overview of the data when you go to detail. You can see now you have a long list with more data in there. Also what you can do is when you go to rights, you can set up different kind of copyrights, even public domain, and you can choose from different creative commons licenses that again you can save in the file when you are exporting it as a JPEG or saving it as an Affinity Photo file. By the way, if you're editing a RAW file and you're in the developer persona, you have the same thing over here where it says metadata, even with the pop down menu. So you have all of the same options. Again, this is not saved in the RAW file. You have to export this in one of the file formats or save it as an Affinity Photo file. Now here's our last tool and this is pretty amazing if you know what to do with that. You can see here we have water on the left side with a very nice color and then water on the right side and we want to have that in the same amazing blue. So how do we do this? Well here is the tool. You go up to View, Studio and then to Info. And you see this little window here. Now it has some hidden functions in it. First of all, you see these three dots. When you click on them, you get a pop down menu that lets you select the kind of color you want to sample. So in this case, we have RGB on both sides, but you can see there is a lot more options. Now, both of them are set to mouse pointer. So they are reading wherever my mouse pointer is looking but I want to have colors sampled even if I move my mouse away. This is where we have these little sniper dots here that we can point onto our canvas. So how do we match these in color? Well, it's actually pretty easy. I want to right click and duplicate both of these layers and then I will select the duplicate, go to filter, blur, average. This will average out all of the colors that are found in that image. Let's do this on both sides. This is a full water image. There's no other colors in there. This is why we can do it so easily. Now I will 
click and drag the left sample point to our left side and the right sample point to our right side. So now that I've done this, you can see that the green color layers are on the lower part of my layer tab here. This is important because I don't want to change the colors on my left side, only on the right side. This means I'm going to create a curve adjustment in between all of these layers because the curve is applied to everything below it, not above it. So now that we have done this, we are going to choose the color picker and we are going to go to the different channels. Let's start with red here. And you can see we have a value of 14. So with the picker selected, I'm clicking in my image and I move my mouse upwards until I have 14. You can see super easy. Let's go to the green channel. You can see here we have green 127. We click again, move it upwards until we reach 127. Let's go a little bit lower. There we go. Perfect. Let's go to the blue channel again, click, drag it upwards. There we go. You can see both sides look exactly the same. And when I turn off my layers, you can see that on both sides. Now we have the same beautiful blue values. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And of course, thank you for all my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. Bye.